so I don't have a lot of time. Uh, let me just, in, I want to introduce then two terms to you so that you've got them and maybe you'll get to work with these in your final lab section. It's pretty common, a very common thing to want to do in remote sensing, well, in environmental analysis and urban plan, all sorts of different uh, areas where they use remote sensing is um, land, what they call land use, land cover. Land use, land color, uh, cover, L-U-L-C. Ignoring for the moment in this introductory thing, the difference between what is the land use and what is the land cover. Well, those, there's something we could talk about there. But basically, I want to take some kind of area and I want to know uh, what's going on there. Where are the urban areas? Where are the vegetation areas? Where are the lakes? Uh, where are rivers? I want to do, be able to classify an area in order to uh, uh, do some kind of further analysis. They do this a lot in remote sensing. How can you take an image and not try to visually sit there and interpret, okay, this, is, this looks like the river, this looks like the forest. How do you get the computer to do that for you? you? There are two major ways that you can give a computer a satellite image and have it classify the image by land use, land cover. Uh, supervised, cla uh, supervised classification. Let me give you unsupervised first. Would it stand to reason to you in two minutes that if that every pixel or every every square of those that satellite image, uh, if it is vegetation, would have similar spectral reflectance characteristics? That if you're looking at forest all of the forest pixels should have high uh, infrared, should have higher you know, green over here, lower red, and so forth. That all of those pixels should be fairly statistically similar. And so in an unsupervised classification technique, what you do is you tell the computer, hey, take this big, and it could even be one of those big data cubes. Here's all of my imagery for this particular area. And please find every area that is statistically, you tell it how many classes you want. Say, hey, I want you to break up this entire image into every pixel into one of, say, five or four different classes. You choose the number of classes. And then the computer sits there and does all kinds of statistical analysis on every one of those pixels to find out, okay, all of these pixels are the most similar. And all of these pixels are the most similar, you know, or, or similar to one another. And all of these pixels over here are most similar to one another. So then you end up with uh, all of your yeah, new raster with one, two, three, three, four, five in it, and it's telling you everything that I've scored five is most similar to each other. And then you look at that, and then you have to use some of your knowledge and go, oh, okay, everything that's five, that looks like forest. Okay, everything here that is uh, marked as three, that looks like water. And so you can go through and you can very easily classify a whole image like that. An alternative then is supervised. And in that case, what you do is you give the computer what's called training areas. And if you say, hey, I'm looking for water, let's say, in this image. I want to know everywhere where there's water. But I happen to know that in this part of the image right here, I'm sure that's water. I'm 100% sure that's water. Then what you do is you go over here and you create a training area for the computer right there and say, that's water. The computer runs all of its statistical analysis on those cells in the raster that's right there, and then goes and finds you every other cell in the raster, or you know, in the entire image, that is statistically similar to this to find other water for you. And so it's pretty common to use either one of these techniques to be able to classify an image, water, like urban, uh, if you're interested in urban planning, urban sprawl, if you want to find areas, if you get a series of images, to do change detection with. Change detection is very big. I want to know how the city's been changing, running classified images through time, and then doing uh, uh, change detection over the images. That's a, a very common thing to do in remote sensing. And I think you, you may get to play with supervised and unclassified, supervised classification in lab. So I want to go ahead and introduce those terms to you. All right, well, we will talk about, uh, don't forget to do a, uh, the, your quiz before Friday, lab this week, last lab this week.
Next week we'll talk about uh, 3D GIS and then wrap up the course. Have a good day. Have a good, great day.